What's up, YouTube? Now we're gonna make a 16th prediction check on the season. But before we do that, here are the qualifying battles so far. And again, in the US Grand Prix, we had another bunch of inconsistencies and rubbish uh, penalties from the FIA for Stroll and Ocon. Ocon getting, of course, disqualified for fuel rates, seriously. Of course, Kimi will not retire. That was our first prediction and the one we most expected to happen. And he is leaving with a victory in the US. His first victory since Australia 2013. I'm not gonna say I'm sad about that. I'm happy about him. But I... Well, on the other hand, yeah, I admit I did want Hamilton to go home to come in to Mexico and get crowned here. Four teams winning races, still not mathematically impossible, but yeah, only the top three have been able to do anything. Uh, Honda, good races, bad races, good but unreliable. We have that point since China, when, well, you may remember about Rain, Pierre Gasly P4, and in China, well, both Toro Rosso ran into each other. Of course, Pierre Gasly's P4 in Bahrain may be one of the main reasons why he is being picked by Red Bull and the fact that Ricciardo is leaving. Here's um, our count of power unit components. As you may notice, Toro Rosso has used more power unit components than anybody else. Oh, and I didn't update the chart, but uh, you get the idea. 15 cars getting engine penalties since Esteban Ocon's disqualification had something to do with the power unit, specifically with how quickly it draws fuel from the fuel tank. It increases our total from 15 to 6... Wait a second, Kevin Magnussen 2. Wait, it's 17. I have, I have to update that before the next race, so... Big crash causing a hell of controversy. We have um, this crash in Belgium. Um, super hard use only once half point because the hard appears in Britain. Uh, Liberty Media overcompensating on grid goals, not just Liberty Media and not just Singapore Grand Prix. But I took this ridiculousness during, during the broadcast of the US Grand Prix. They did spice up the view ratio, of course, with the whole intro thing. And we don't know whether the 2021 rules are going or not going to include the MGUH. Bottas finishing people or lower. He is P4 at the moment after um, Kimi Raikkonen's victory in America. Mercedes winning in Mexico, well, there will, it is pretty much guaranteed that Hamilton will win. It is not happened yet. I'm calling it a half point so for now because, well, it's pretty much guaranteed. It's probably going to elevate to a full point and yeah it's going to be elevated to a full point when the checkered flag falls in Mexico. Red Bull definitely will not sign Alonso since he will be retiring after winning the 24 hours of Le Mans. A brilliant race by Fernando Alonso and two teammates whose names I can't remember. Red Bull sign Honda, that happened, that's old news. And Max Verstappen seems to be really happy about it. One new race winner, I'm again counting Max Verstappen for, for his non Kivya boosted win in Austria. And of course, Kvyat is back this next season, so we might have another Max Verstappen Kvyat boosted victory. 
That, that's a lot scoring Kimi 2 to 1. It is mathematically impossible, but we could have um, Vettel outscore Kimi 1.5 to 1. Theoretically. Theoretically. It's beginning to start, it's beginning to seem nearly impossible. In fact, Bregenman closed the gap a little with his victory. But, yeah. Somebody getting a penalty ban. Roman Grosjean is getting incredibly close. He's just two points away from getting banned from one race. And I hope it happens as soon as possible. I would love to see him banned from Brazil. And Red Bull finishing second is now, well, mathematically impossible. I think. Let, let's, uh, let's see the calculations. Yeah, it's mathematically impossible for Red Bull to finish in P2. So, here's mathematically P3. Williams finishing 7th. We know it's not going to happen, but because of the mathematics of the situation, we can't call it a point until Abu Dhabi. So, you're gonna have to wait for that point to get lit green. Rubbish red flag, we have that since Monaco. And, well, I don't see any possibility of getting a line. As for my prediction board, um, once again, fail on the geography now. Uh, safety car somewhere, safety car at some point in Mexico, we'll see. Um, no one has come out of the closet and probably won't in the next few years. Alonso, resting pick reference, we have that from a video posted by Formula 1 themselves. As for the topless pictures, we have that point completely covered. Here are the beauties. Russia joke, we have that from the Russian Grand Prix. Well, from the Canadian Grand Prix, but this one's a lot better. And from Instagram. Um, Kimi Angry on Team Radio in Hungary, of course. You forgot to connect the drink first. Yes, confirmed. Is this the drink? Is it on? As for the crashes, yes, we've had those crashes both in Monaco and Singapore. Checko, you have. I'm not gonna say that. A race without any DNFs, we have that from China, half point, because Hartley retired so far in the race that he was qualified P20. Not only was Grosjean disqualified in Italy, Ocon and Magnussen have both been disqualified from the US, so yeah. Lewis Hamilton versus Dressgate pretty much speaks for itself at this point. I'm so sad right now. Look at my nephew. Why are you wearing a princess dress? <laughs> is this what you got for Christmas? <laughs> Why did you ask for a princess dress for Christmas? Boys don't wear princess dresses! <laughs> Non-native speaker of Spanish giving an interview in Spanish. We have that from Spain because of Felipe Massa. Mm. 10 races with first lap drama? Well, this, uh, this is the count with 15 counting the US Grand Prix with the whole bunch of crashes in the S's. Someone being sent back of the grid twice? We have the count here. And Ocon joins. Well, Ocon and Magnuson join. So I have to correct that. So 17. And many people have been sent to the back of the grid. Some of them more than once. Verstappen, driver of the day. He was driver of the day in the US. Following his P2 from P18 from P on the grid. Impressive, isn't it? Driver of the day score no higher than one third, 
Verstappen is the first to break through the 3 DOFD mark with 4 drivers a day. Hamilton, Vettel and Ricciardo have 3 each, Raikkonen has 1, Gasly, Alonso, Leclerc and Perez has 1, counting both Perez and Leclerc for Azerbaijan. Oh, got on the podium, he was on the podium of qualifying in Belgium. And let's be honest, it's as far as we're gonna get. That's the man. That is P3. P3. You're joking, you're joking. Woo! Yes! Woo! Well done, guys. Well done. It's Hamilton to tell you. Oh my god. Well, as for the Mexico Trophy, we're gonna know that next week. No injury or death. We have that point cancelled from Bahrain because of the whole Francesco Segorini incident. And for some reason, I saw him back this race in the Ferrari garage. Congratulations to him. Andres Manuel losing the general election. Well, he won by an absolute landslide. Verstappen doing something stupid, we have that point since about China, and this is a photo of him in Monaco after his FP3 crash. We've gotten used to the halo of course, and yeah, this is a photo of Leclerc's car in Belgium. Bit stop problems, 10 races, the count so far is 15. Counting the US Grand Prix in FP1 when Esteban Ocon did a bit of a fail, fail to break in the exact spot, prompting this little meme in Italian. In for those who don't speak Italian, here's your translation. Force India did smash into each other in Singapore. <laughs> Which kind of ruined the 19th of September. That gives us a total of 18 points out of 25 on my board. For a total of 29 and a half out of 50 as of the 20, 22nd of October. For God's sake, I forgot to update that since last month. The championship span, we are in a super critical moment of the season as of entering the Mexican Grand Prix. With Lewis Hamilton, championship leader, 70 points ahead with 346 points and 75 up for grabs. And as far as the Singapore Grand Prix, Vettel had a span of 33 points, putting in semi-critical in, in a semi-critical condition and we were hoping for Hamilton to clinch the title in the US but he didn't yeah I guess I didn't update the span score but Vettel has a span of 5 as for the Constructors Championship everyone except the top 2 are still in contention uh, and I also didn't update that chart, but as you see, the um, Ferrari is in semi-critical condition, so if Mercedes get a 1-2 and Ferrari have a double retirement, Mercedes will be crowned um, double the, the two world championships in Mexico, although that's uh, I find unlikely. This is my Instagram in case you want to follow me and I'll see you next time.